it was thought after the development of vaccines and discovery of antibiotics that man may ultimately be able to overcome all infectious diseases but this never happened in fact for prevention and control of infections we need to do epidemiological studies and epidemiological interventions and definitions are critical for any type of epidemiological action for disease reporting for disease measuring for measuring morbidity and for that we need clear cut definitions which will be covered in this lecture part 1 an infection is called when the infectious agent enters and develops or enters and multiplies or both inside the body of a living being and once an infection occurs the body responds in some way to it it may be in the form of an immune response or the body may become diseased but an infection does not always result in illness the body may be able to fight off the infection and keep it in check and no clinical illness results there are various levels of infection starting from colonization for example staph aureus can colonize the skin and lives in normal dysopharynx also so it remains at the surface second level is subclinical infection or in apparent infection infection occurs but no disease results it happens very commonly in polio latent infection for example herpes simplex the infectious agent remains latent in the body and develops into disease whenever the body defenses are low and finally the latest the last stage is manifest or clinical infection when the actual disease occurs due to the infectious agent contamination is presence of an infectious agent on the body surface skin mucosa or in clothes beddings toys or on the surface of surgical instruments or surgical dressings and other inanimate articles and in consumable substances like water milk food so contamination means the infectious agent remains on the surface it does not mean infection pollution is not contamination pollution is denotes presence of an offensive matter but not necessarily infectious matter in the environment of the living body contamination of a body surface mere existence of infectious agent on the body surface does not mean the person is a carrier for that infection we will discuss the carrier state later in this lecture infestation when infestation is used for persons or animals it means that there is lodgement development and reproduction of orthopods on the body surface of such a person or animal or in the clothing examples are lice itch mite that is scabies infestation is also described to say invasion of the gut by parasitic worms for example ascariasis is infestation by round worms infested articles or premises are those when these harbor or give shelter to animal forms especially orthopods like cockroaches and mosquitoes or rodents host in infectious disease epidemiology means uh, an animal which can be human animal bird orthopod also that allows sustenance to an infectious agent under natural conditions that is the body of the host is adapted to give to let the infectious agent enter itself and sustain itself an obligate host is the only host for that infectious agent that is the infectious agent can survive only in that animal species for example man in measles and for salmonella typhi some infectious agents require more than one host to complete their life cycle in such infectious agents the host in which the parasite accomplishes maturity or spends its sexual stage is by convention called to be the primary host or definitive host for example anopheles mosquito is the definitive host or primary host for malarial parasite and the host in which the parasite spends its asexual stage or larval stage 
is considered to be the secondary host or intermediate host. For example, man is the secondary host for malarial parasite. A transport host is a carrier that simply lets the organism survive on itself to be able to carry on to the next host without any kind of development inside its own body. For example, some small fishes that carry the broad fish tapeworm to larger fishes which consume it and are ultimately eaten by larger animals or humans where, which act as the final host for broad fish tapeworm. An infectious disease is a disease that occurs due to an infectious agent. All infectious diseases like infestations are communicable. Infectious disease is communicable and may be either contagious or a non-contagious infectious disease. A contagious infection disease is the disease that spreads from person to person by direct contact. It can be animal to animal or animal and persons by direct contact with the infected individual or their secretion. For example, scabies, trachoma, sexually transmitted diseases, leprosy, etc. So all contagious diseases are infectious diseases, but not all infectious diseases are contagious. For example, malaria, for example, food poisoning. Food poisoning can occur because of presence of the infectious agent in the food, but a person does not get it for by coming in direct contact with another person who has food poisoning. So what is a communicable disease? It is an illness which occurs due to the presence of an infectious agent or its toxic products. And it arises through transmission of the infectious agent or its products from an infected person or animal or any reservoir to a susceptible host. This transmission can occur either directly or indirectly, that is through an intermediate host or vector or non-living environment. An epidemic is defined as the occurrence in a given community or region of cases of a disease the number of which is clearly in excess of normal expectancy for that region or community for that part of the year. We say cases of disease or, or a health related behavior for example an epidemic of smoking or other health related event we mean to say that it's not just disease can be other thing related to health. The community or region and the period in which the cases arise must be specified precisely. So what is the number of cases which are required when we say that there is an epidemic that is this is not the normal number of cases or expected number of cases they are clearly more than that and an epidemic is to be declared. That number of cases varies according to the agent to the population statistics or previous exposure to that disease or lack of exposure to that disease or the time of occurrence we will discuss in a little detail in the next slide so epidemicity is comparative to what is usual number of cases for that area among the specified population and for the same season of the year for example a disease which has not been seen for a long time, for a number of years in a community, even a single case of that communicable disease is sufficient for declaration of an epidemic or a disease which has never been seen in that area. Just two cases of such disease which are detected close by together or together in time that is one after the other may be sufficient for declaration of an epidemic because once an epidemic is declared it requires immediate action and full investigation. So surveillance systems for various diseases have been put in place to identify an unusual number of cases or epidemic as early as possible so that the control measures can be put in place as early as possible. A disease is endemic in a population indicates that the disease is constantly pre present in that particular population group or geographic areas at some level and there is no import from outside that disease the infectious agent is maintained within that population. In fact, the endemic levels may be considered as the usual level or expected frequency of the disease within that area or within that population group. For example, common cold is endemic in many populations. 
now hyper endemic means that the disease is not only endemic but at a pre present constantly at a high incidence or high prevalence and affects all the age groups equally holo endemic on the other hand the disease is prevalent and the prevalence begins early in life so that most of the child population gets infected and shows the evidence of disease and this leads to a state of equilibrium among the adults that is some degree of immunity among the adults so that the adult population shows evidence of the disease much less commonly than do the children an example is malaria in some endemic areas for example at present northeast areas of our country an endemic disease can erupt into an epidemic that is the numbers can rise unusually when the conditions are favorable for example hepatitis a can cause an outbreak typhoid fever similarly a sporadic disease means that the cases of the disease are seen irregularly or randomly every now and then usually not that frequent uncommonly the cases are infrequent and disconnected in space and time that is you see one case here some time later one case at another place there is no connection between to any two cases hence a common source of infection cannot be recognized for example tetanus herpes zoster etc sometimes the sporadic cases may actually be the starting point of an epidemic that is you see one sporadic case another person reports another doctor reports the same case which can now be a connection can be seen either close by or in time so it sometimes sporadic cases may be a starting point of an epidemic the zoonotic diseases are usually they usually present sporadically for example rabies tetanus we will talk about zoonotic disease a little later pandemic is an epidemic which occurs worldwide or at least over a very wide area on the globe crossing international boundaries and usually affecting a large number of people a pandemic occurs when simultaneous transmission occurs throughout the world an infectious agent can cause pandemic when it is able to infect and cause disease in the humans but is also able to spread easily from human to human and the efforts to control the spread of such pandemic there is often social turbulence and huge economic losses the examples of recent year covid-19 pandemic of previous pandemics of influenza and cholera zoonosis note the e which means plural more than one disease if it is zoonosis with an i it means a single zoonotic disease so zoonosis is a disease which can be naturally transmitted from vertebrate animals to man for example rabies plague bovine tuberculosis anthrax etc further anthropozoonoses are infections that can be transmitted to man from vertebrate animals example of anthropozoonoses are rabies plague hereditary disease anthrax etc zoo anthropozoonoses are the infections which man can transfer to vertebrate animals for example cattle handlers handlers if they have tuberculosis can transmit human tuberculosis to cattle and emphysinoses are infections which are naturally maintained in both the population man and lower vertebrate animals and can be transmitted in either direction for example trypanosoma cruzae an exotic disease is a disease which is not known to occur in that country but is imported from outside epizoonotic the name now may suggest that there is a high prevalence of disease in a specified animal population at the specified time in other words an epidemic in an animal population sometimes it may pose a threat to human population also for example avian influenza spread through eastern mediterranean region in 2006 and large epizoonotics occurred in many countries some human infections were also reported from some areas but 
only a few zoonotic agents have the capability of causing, causing major epidemics in the human population. Examples of uh, disease with the capability of causing epizoonotic prevalence, anthrax, brucellosis, rabies, influenza, etc. in given animal populations. A pornithic is an outbreak of a particular disease in specific bird population. And zootic, as the name suggests, it is equivalent of endemic disease in given animal populations of a given region during season or climate. In other words, an endemic occurring in animals. Nosocomial infections, also known as healthcare associated infection or hospital acquired infections. Nosocomial infection is an infection acquired during the process of receiving health care, which can be a hospital or a smaller or whatever health care facility. Nosocomial infection indicates a new illness that is, that is distinct from the ailment for which the patient was primarily admitted or brought or came to the health facility. And it is called nosocomial infection. It is not only a new illness, but was not already present when the patient took admission in the healthcare facility and is not a residual of the infection for which the patient first reported to the healthcare facility. The symptoms of the infection may appear even after the patient has been discharged and nosocomial infections also include occupational infections which are acquired by the staff working in the healthcare facility. Example of nosocomial infections, infection of surgical wounds, acquiring hepatitis B during hospital stay, urinary tract infections due to catheterization. Iatrogenic disease. Iatrogenic disease is the result of a diagnostic or therapeutic procedure performed on a patient. In other words, the professional activity generates an adverse health effect. So it can be called as doctor generated. There are differing views on what constitutes iatrogenesis and its scope because other uh, professions may also lead to adverse health effects. The iatrogenic disease resulting from the diagnostic or therapeutic procedure may be serious enough to prolong the hospital stay or to require a special new treatment itself or may actually be life threatening. Iatrogenic is mostly related to drug therapy reactions or immunization or diagnostic procedures. Examples are allergic reaction to penicillin or vaccines, aplastic anemia due to use of chloramphenicol, childhood leukemia due to prenatal x-rays, etc. In short, iatrogenic disease is a hazard of health care. Surveillance. We will talk about surveillance in more detail in epidemiology lectures. But it deserves a mention here because it is regarding a disease, mostly infectious diseases. So the definition of surveillance is continuous analysis, interpretation and feedback of systematically collected data generally using methods which are practical, uniform and rapid rather than accurate or complete. So we observe the trend of the disease by various methods and we observe the trend of the disease in time, place and person. Is it increasing in time, with time or at a place or in some persons or in any group of people is it increasing? By constant surveillance and analysis of data, changes in disease prevalence can be detected or anticipated and appropriate action can be taken. The appropriate action can be investigation into an epidemic or control measures to be put in place. For surveillance, the data may be collected from the fact for the factors. The data may be disease incidence of prevalence or factors which influence the disease prevalence. And the sources of such data can include mortality morbidity records seen from death certificates or hospital records or general practice registers, notifications, etc. Eradication of a disease implies that there is a cessation of all kind of transmission of that particular infection. 
and that the infectious agents has been extinctly has been removed from the face of earth and that this has been achieved through constant surveillance and containment of cases hence the term eradication is an absolute term or we can say an all or none phenomenon that is either the infectious agent is present in this world or not so the term eradication is to be used only in case of termination of an infection from the entire globe so if a disease has been eradicated it implies that the disease will no longer occur in any population till date 2020 the only disease that has been eradicated is smallpox when the disease is removed in a, in this way from large area from a large geographical area but not from the world we can use the term elimination so the term elimination is sometimes used to refer to eradication kind of thing of the disease from a large geographic region or from a political jurisdiction for example measles has been eliminated from many countries and as per the current knowledge diseases which are amenable to such eradication which happened with smallpox are measles diphtheria polio guinea worm and a few more which have the potential to be eradicated from the face of earth